Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our little base, which is doing incredibly well. In today's episode, we are going to be making the fertilizer maker, and we're hopefully going to start converting water into oxygen, because our main goal is to simply have the supercomputer up and running so that we can start with the more advanced tech. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this tile along here. In fact, we're going to use the gas permeable tile and using the wolframite, which means that there will be a very fast temperature transfer. Going to dig out all of this, and this is where the supercomputer is going to be. Very likely, this area will warm up incredibly quickly. We also need to start mining out the polluted ice so that we can put it somewhere for a collection. That way we can start using that to turn into fertilizer rather than having to dig through all this slime and have the problem of contaminated oxygen. Apparently diseases are now a little bit easier to contract and ultimately are a bigger issue than they were in the past. Past. So, not quite sure where we're going to place the polluted reservoir, but it could be anywhere. We could put it over here. It will, of course, produce polluted oxygen, but that is heavier than regular oxygen, so it will stay at the bottom. Hmm, then maybe the best idea would be to do something like this. Just dig out down there, dig this up. Of course we have the problem of this turning into a seed, so maybe not. Either way though, somewhere nice and low, so maybe over here instead, yeah that would be easier. So deconstruct that, turn it into ladders, dig out as much as this as possible, and then have the storage compactors holding the frozen pollutant. And this will also be nice and close to the tiny batteries, which I'm going to change underneath to the wolframite as well. So these will actively heat up the ice, melting it, and that will also cool down the batteries. That seems very reasonable, actually. Surprisingly so for me. You may all continue. Yes! Get that poop. Now, there is something I would like to do, and that is to add one of you when I can, and the thermal switch. So this has two major roles. The first role is to regulate an area's power simply based on the temperature the switch is detecting. So it can automatically turn off generators if the room is getting too hot, it can stop cooling mechanics if the area is getting too cold. It's a really awesome addition to the game. However, by manipulating it, you can also use it as an automatic on-off switch whenever you wish it to be. Rather than sending one of your minions to turn off things, you can just swap some of the numbers around and turn things off all for yourself, which is really, really nice. It lets you play God a little bit, more so than this game normally allows you to. So I will be trying to research that straight after we research the fertilizer maker. So grabbing all that first, and then we'll jump on over to all of this. We also have the liquid tepidizer. Warms large bodies of water, marginally. I think that's mostly for showers, because showers now require a certain temperature. I think. Food shortage? No. People just, people just haven't been harvesting for some reason or other. Possibly because my stammer keeps scaring them. Also need more oxygen here. We've kind of split it a bit too far. You don't consume oxygen, do you, Weezwarts? Because if you do, that will be really irritating. Now that the top section is removed, the heat is being dispersed a lot faster. Much, much better. Although the heat will be trapped at the top a little bit, so perhaps moving the batteries down to here instead, so that the heat has to go past things like the Weezwart, might be a better idea. Or perhaps we could even have them down here, at the very bottom, forcing them to go past everything. Especially since we already have the supercomputer so far up. That is something I didn't really think about. I know, shocking, right? This is gonna be the prettiest little computer area ever. Oh, come on! Also, could you do some harvesting, please? Just a little bit. Finally, this storage compactor is ready, and let's only allow it to hold the polluted ice. This is also the only storage compactor which actually allows this. 
So as soon as all this is done, we'll have a big sweep effort absolutely everywhere, and any polluted ice will simply find its way there, any regular ice and snow will find its way over here, and everywhere will finally be clean. We will cleanse the world. Also, that is apparently too warm, so let's dig that up as well so we can plant it downstairs. Okay, everyone! Do what you do that you do so well. Since the less dense hot air rises and the colder, more dense air drops, we really should have had the batteries underneath this storage compactor. A lot more heat would have been saved this way. So what we're going to do is move these batteries down to here. So yes, that does mean we are doing more work again, so things like cleaning up may be slowed down again. Whoa, the supercomputer is heating up so quickly. Heat production is 240. That is actually ridiculous, since the batteries are only 30 each. That could actually pose a long-term problem, but of course, we do eventually run out of things to research, and we're not always using it, so we just have to be careful not to allow it to get too warm. How hot can it get before it takes damage? 75 degrees, okay. Then we really need to turn that off pretty darn soon. And that's why I need the, the little thermal switch, so I can do it manually. Okay, disable for now. Thank you. Allow the heat to move around a bit first. Oh, this is so annoying. The one over here is perfect. A really low decor expectation, a quick learner, amphibious, and of course uncultured, which is causing the low decor expectation. But then he's also a mouth breather. Which means he'll be using up more oxygen than all the others. But the other stats make him a brilliant all-rounder. Because, of course, the quick learner is what's giving him the learning skill. Oh, I don't know what to do with this guy. He would be so useful. Okay, I think I will accept him. We just have to bear in mind our oxygen generation is going to need to be buffed up. A very small amount just melted out of the storage compactor, and so we can safely say this is indeed working. And really, really warm. This is why I'm going to dig out all of this, and I'm putting these lovely wheeze warts in this little gas permeable cage. They need to do more work for us. Also, is that a wheeze wart seed? Wait. Hang on a minute. Cancel that so it falls onto the granite. I think we may have a third wheeze wart. Wheeze wart. The funny words. Is it? I... Th it may just be ice. I think I may have been overexcited for nothing. It's hard to tell. It doesn't tell me. What is this? Oh yeah, Turner, you need somewhere to sleep, don't you? <laughs> That's something I forgot to do. You can have a nice, comfy sandstone bed. Have fun with that. Well, here's an interesting little bug. Apparently the sound waves from the person up here sleeping were so loud, they now remain as an echo of their former selves, forever snoring and disturbing the sleep of all who dare enter here. Or something like that. And no one too interesting right now, sadly. A load more polluted ice just melted from the storage containers. This is definitely the way to do things. It's cooling the batteries, and it's helping us by just having something for us to convert into glorious, glorious compost. Oh, and apparently that just melted as well. There we are, some more melting from the storage compactor. So let's start sorting this out then. So we have the liquid pump, which will go over here. This will then take the water nice and upwards, la di da di da And then, what I may do is have something like... Where are you? 
where is the item which allows me to separate different water types? Just because if we pump in the incorrect type into the compost maker, we will actually damage it. But saying that, we shouldn't get any more fresh water from now on in this reservoir, because there's not all that much snow left, so a little bit of damage is probably worth it for removing all the hassle. So never mind, I don't care if the wrong stuff ends up damaging the compost maker for the time being. All the way over here, and then over here in refinement, we want the fertilizer maker. So it is the fertilizer, not the compost. Okay. I understand things slightly better now. Excellent. Essentially, that was my entire experience throughout university. Except for most days, I was just confused. But sometimes, I actually felt like I understood things. Those were glorious days. Few and far between. Then, of course, both of them will need some power. We still only have one manual generator. May need to up that in the not-so-distant future. I don't really want to use coal this time round, though, because of the excess heat. And now heat is so difficult to contain, and the fact that the generator can take damage from the heat it's producing, I would rather stick with the little humble manual generators. What are you doing, Polluted Ice? Why is everything being so confusing today? Again, something I've said quite a lot during my time at university. Here it goes, and... Begin the glorious production of fertilizer. Good. 120 grams per second. We only need 100 grams per day, I believe, per plant. Almost said plank then. Per plank, we only need a little bit of fertilizer. No, but that probably just made enough fertilizer for half of my plants straight away. Of course, now we're out of power, but that's pretty cool. How much heat does this actually produce then? Let's have a quick look see over on the refinement, my bob. Hello there, fertilizer maker. Plus 15, that's like half a battery. That's fine, that can stay there. Although it is going to end up melting all of this polluted ice on top of it. I mean, it's a good place for the polluted ice to melt, considering that's what this is using. I'm going completely mad. The fertilizer requirement is 4,000 grams per cycle. We are still making a lot of fertilizer doing this, and we almost had enough for all of this anyway, so it should now balance out. But really, I said 100. 4,000. I was 40 times under what it actually needs. I'm not the smartest person around. I know, huge surprise. I can see a problem emerging here. Lots of polluted oxygen. This area may be lost to us very, very soon, because I can't be bothered to put in the necessary countermeasures to fix all of this. Eventually, it will just be a giant freezer room for our batteries anyway, so it's not too much of a big issue, but even so, it is fairly annoying. I've also just thought, if we install a shower or a lavatory, what we can do is have the unlimited water from the geyser be pumped up into the toilets, which will make everyone a lot happier than using the outhouses right now. The foul water then gets piped down here and into the fertilizer maker. So we have unlimited fertilizer, because we have unlimited water. We also have unlimited oxygen, because we have unlimited water which I need to swap to soon as I am running out of algae, although we do have quite a lot I haven't yet bothered to mine out, so we are fine for a lot longer than it seems. So what I may do now then is dig out this tile, dig down, this will be a nice carbon dioxide trap, this also allows us access to this frozen area, and then we can start working on this water. What I may do is mop up all of this, or just allow it to drain away, then make a huge basin down here. This way, ah, yeah, this way the steam will get stuck in the cold area over here, and then become liquid water. This will cool down rather rapidly, especially if we use the wolframite stuff to make the basin. So something like that. However, I don't have too much wolframite left, so I need to find some more of that first. There's some over there. Is there any, like, large chunks of it we can just grab rather than having to take away bit by bit? Doesn't seem like it. Any over here? Wolframite? Please? Can I just say a lump of Wolframite, maybe? No? 
Apparently it's rarer than I expected, so just a section of it then will be made out of wolframite. The rest will just be made out of copper. So, dig down to there. We want it to fall to about here-ish. This will be quite a large basin. But we do want that so it cools down faster. The thinner we can have the water, the better it is for cooling. Same goes for the steam. Then we're going to want to dig out all of this. All of that can go bye-bye. We can also start storing ice down here as well, which will also help to cool down the water. And of course it will melt the ice, thus resulting in more water. I think this is a good way of doing it. Plus, it means we can start using this frost area for other things, like the supercomputer, as this one is now essentially being converted into a battery room and poop room. A poopery room. Well, hello! We have found a second geyser. Now, this isn't the best placement for it, but what we could do is have the water get funneled down naturally into here, or perhaps just have it naturally funnel via the use of some tiles all the way across here, la di da di da, and dropping it off here. Either way, though, I want access to that second geyser. Now, we'll put this down on very low priority so they don't start building it until they've done everything else. How much water's in there? Okay, quite a bit. Overpressured, by any chance? No, it's actually producing steam. Fantastic. I wonder if it produces steam even when you can't see it. We've also found the edge of the world here, so that's interesting. Cancel that. So we want the tile to be like this. Just so my minions can get through. This will be the last bit. This will be the last thing to do. Then, honestly, we could just have it flat. Just go like, yay, all the way across. We'll have to mop up all of this, of course. Let's put on maximum, so when we do eventually break through, that's the first thing they actually do. It can dodge everything along the way, absolutely fine, and then splat, it gets dropped off here. That actually looks pretty simple. Far more simple than I expected. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Once again, just cancel this little bit here, just in case. That's all fives, okay. Down here should be all nines at the moment. The algae terrarium should be eight. So this is the main thing. Slime is only being stored in here, which is, of course, our plague zone now. The only thing is, we don't want any polluted ice getting into this section, so we will also have to be a little bit careful with digging out any polluted ice here so we have it and, and we can store it elsewhere as soon as possible. So let's grab all of this, just make sure it's all marked for me. Is that polluted ice? Yes it is. This is going to be good. This means we can definitely go ahead and start using the electrolyzer, that's it, the electrolyzer, not the oxidizer, to turn water into oxygen, but also into hydrogen. The hydrogen can then be used in a hydrogen generator somewhere up here once we make a hydrogen trap. Yes, I feel like it's all working. Also, that uses that water incredibly slowly. Look, the water problem's fixed. It looks like there's unlimited water going, but that's just the flow. As you can see, this isn't pumping because it doesn't need more water in the system. Where are you going? I suppose there's not much else to do, so you're just going to work on that, since right now only one person can be building this ladder at a time. Ooh, we need to sweep up that slime now, though. So people, focus on moving that slime elsewhere. It's took me far too long to do, but I'm now moving the manual generator over to the cold room. This way, it should be a lot easier to maintain the heat in our main base and keep everything nice and cold, because the bristle blossoms love it cold. And we're not making enough fertilizer still. We may need a second fertilizer maker. Thankfully, they don't produce much heat, and they are very, very efficient, and they don't take up too much power. So maybe it would be worth having two of them. Glorious poopy air everywhere. 
one more person is joining our ranks because he has the lovely diver's lungs and is very, very athletic, making him just good at getting around and ultimately a good character to have. There we are. And you can have a cot as well in our little cot room. And yes, I have noticed there is a lot of contaminated oxygen currently in the base. I am putting down some air deodorizers, and the reason is we didn't have enough manual air locks over here, so it started to seep in before I realized it. The same also happened down here because I wasn't paying attention. It's my fault, obviously. Who, who else's would it be? But I am also trying to fix it. It should be fixed pretty soon, as not that much really got in, just enough to be annoying. Actually, I think it's all your fault. We are now producing so much food from the Thistle Blossoms we are actually allowing food to decay. Now this isn't too much of an issue really, because the decayed food will eventually become contaminated dirt, which we can just turn back into compost. So go ahead and decay, and now we have all the air scrubbers pretty much everywhere, the air deodorizers. There's no real issue either about where it's going to be stored, since it will only be stored as contaminated dirt when it decays from there for a very short period of time, as none of these lovely storage containers will allow that other than this one. Now we're just waiting for this one dig to be done, and we can fill this full of water and see how it's all going to go. But first, ice, snow, ice, ice, that's all fine. We just don't want to see any polluted ice. Also, why am I trying to mop up the water from there? Obviously a bit of a mistake. And go, go, go! Run away! That's very warm water. Very weirdly kind of floating into the new area. Okay, let's not look at that too closely. That's kind of bizarre. So next, let's sort out this as well, and then we have two steam geysers worth of steam all of the time as water. Then I've got to figure out how I'm going to use this water to make oxygen and where. What I think I'm going to do, because this is the main hot area, what I will do is completely seal this off when we're finished. We'll have a pump there just for the water, and then using the regular pipes, which do allow heat to escape from them, we, we are going to run the pipes in a kind of zigzag all along here, and then eventually up to the oxidizer, to the electrolyzer in the corner here, because we can use things like the ice to force it to be cool. Or, of course, we could just have the deoxidizer, the electrolyzer, in here. And actually, that may be a better idea. Since this is still going to be essentially a giant ice box, we just break this apart, this fills of oxygen, eventually going upwards, and that's where we get our oxygen from, from the giant freezer room. And with this thing now heating this area up very quickly from now, that shouldn't be too much of a problem either. It shouldn't be too cold. And the plants like it cold anyway, so the plants won't die. It's just a matter of making sure that our lovely fellows are comfortable. But they don't need to go down here that much. Lots of options. Lots of options indeed. Why is the water looking so weird? That's a lot of heat. Now, some of these were made of that special conductive material, so a lot of the heat should be lost through the tiles. I hope. I've also just realized we have been on 0% stress for a very long time. I have the happiest little minions ever. That's glorious. Did you just make some steam? Did we just get some more water? Oh, thank you. There it goes, dripping into this. I really thought you'd get more from these geysers. It's a little bit worrying how little we're getting, but we won't need that much water, so I'm hoping it's going to be fine. And we do have two of them. We will have two of them as soon as we connect all this together, which is now priority nine, like most other things in the base. But this is really nine. The rest are like fake nines. They're actually just upside down sixes. In my head, that was hilarious. <laughs> One more person to join our merry band, and this will be the last for a while. And although he's not really that good, he does have diver's lungs, and he is a narcoleptic chef. I don't know why that amuses me so much, 
but it really, really does. The Narcoleptic Check for everyone. Oh, that's why, because it sounds like a really bad TV show. <laughs> <laughs> the narcoleptic chef with your friend Nicola yep that that has to be a thing somewhere if it isn't it should be also we are actually collecting quite a lot of water now that we've got this out of the overpressure zone it, it's producing steam I think twice a day maybe twice per day cycle and each time it's making at least 10 to 20 kilograms so I think we'll be absolutely fine for water which means soon we should add the lavatories then the lavatories can attach to the fertilizer maker which means we don't need this setup anymore so we can seal all this off and then we can perhaps work on cleaning the air in this section even though that wasn't the original intention it's certainly an idea this would also mean we no longer need the compost heap over here because all of that is going into there. I also think I do need a second fertilizer maker then. Lots of plans, lots of schemes. And it's surprisingly working out pretty well, although someone seems- Oh yes, they all walked in some horrible water and got really upset about it. Ah, and we still have this tiny little hatch here. He's been here the entire time, eating seeds, eating our food, and pooping out coal. Oh, you keep on doing you, little hatch. Happy news, the water is actually cooling down a lot faster than I expected, and all of that heat is going downwards because it's being trapped in the carbon dioxide and the polluted oxygen. So this will work out better than I expected, at least in terms of not overheating everything. I could, of course, always drop the water lower and perhaps have the basin down here instead. Certainly an idea. Probably not something I'm going to do, but certainly an idea nonetheless. I wonder if there's any more steam geysers. Hopefully still above this one, so we could just allow it to slide in just like the one from over here. If we could get three steam geysers, I think we would have enough water guaranteed. I wasn't paying attention for maybe three seconds, and Max has got himself stuck. Apparently, he can't jump down from here, and he's going to suffocate in this little carbon dioxide trap because he is a moron. And I'm going to put his tombstone in the steam geyser. Unless he survives. C Max. Well then, so... Max is dead, we have lost our first one to general stupidity, and of course it's my fault for forgetting I have to babysit them from every last moment. So yeah, we'll put the tombstone in there, or maybe we'll put it over here straight away, I don't really know honestly. Where do you put a tombstone? I'm assuming that the memorial will be a negative to decor. What a shock. Um. We could put it down here like this. That's kind of cool, actually. That would be a very interesting way, having the pool of remembrance. Just don't, just don't think that your drinking water has a corpse just underneath it. As long as you don't think about it, it's completely fine. Hmm. I don't know where to put this. Um. Where did I? I have no idea. Where would our graveyard be? I really didn't think I'd have to do this, honestly. Where do you put a graveyard? I can think of nowhere where I want to put this graveyard. But I need to put it down quickly, otherwise people will start mourning too much and morbs are going to start spawning. I do not want morbs. Right now I do not need any more contaminated oxygen. How about here? No, because that's ice which will eventually melt and cause all sorts of problems. Where do I put th this thing? <laughs> Screw it, it's going in here. This is the pool of remembrance. It's not the main one, it's the smaller one off to the side, which no one uses. Can someone please do this? Why are you collecting algae from there? You have algae stored over here. Technically it's closer, but it's also scalding hot water. That's not very smart. Saying that, not as dumb as this fellow. Max died from dumb. An overdose of dumb. 
Also, his his memorial is going to be made out of sandstone. It's going to be remarkably pretty. Really? Ah, hello, Hatch. I also like how the hatch is actually a plus to decor, so it's just helping out, allowing people to be happy in this area. Thank you, Hatch. Can someone please build this? Anyone? Anyone at all? There's lots of you. Oh, we're actually all done down here. Fantastic. This will also be holding ice and snow very soon as well. Help to cool down the water and of course melt the ice and snow so we actually have proper water. There's not a food shortage, I'm just being very lax on harvesting because of how much food we did have. Okay, good, 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 that's being built now. So soon we can move Max. Max, I'm more angry at you than sad. Like you were one of our originals. You had such good stats, you were effective. And, to make matters worse, you were apparently good at learning. You were our smart person. 666.6 grams of oxygen per meter squared. Max, what were you doing down here? Okay, now someone grab Max. And it's a race to grab Max. Who's going to win? Here comes Mary. Don't know why you did that little jump there for. Nope, you just wanted to build a tile. Oh, here it comes. And this is hilarious, by the way. There we go. 1,000 grams of Max. Max is now a resource. And everyone's mourning, aren't they? Ah, that's so annoying. Oh, wow. They've changed how mourning works. Beforehand, it was a modifier to other things. Now, it's just every day they get 20% more stressed. As in, 20% stress writing. That's really bad. Does that remove mourning? No, it's still there. But I'm hoping, though, that now this has happened, they mourn for less time. Maybe. Maybe like a, a, less days spent mourning. We have loads of water building up. I think with two- ooh, wow, that's weird. That's completely full. I think with two of these geysers, we will likely actually have enough. Well, I'm afraid I am actually all out of time for today's episode. Ignoring the death of Max, everything is going fantastically. We have way more food than we need. We have a load of algae, which is definitely going to be enough until we start using oxygen from water. And we almost have both of the geysers feeding a single massive reservoir of water. So ultimately, we are actually getting very close to being self-sustaining because the water will also produce hydrogen when we turn it into oxygen and of course hydrogen because you know H2O and all that and that hydrogen can then be used from a hydrogen generator which provides a lot of power per 100 grams of hydrogen produced. It's all going really oddly well. I thought this expansion was actually fairly difficult. I may have been wrong. Or perhaps I've been very lucky with the placement of everything. Either way, thank you for watching. I also have no idea why I've been clapping so much recently, but apparently clapping is just a good thing. Well done everyone, well done to the people watching, and of course if you have enjoyed the video, then likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Oxygen Not Included is a series you would like to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. In the next episode, we make oxygen from water.